Howdy and welcome to Burley United Methodist Church's worship service for Father's Day 2022. We are so very grateful that you could tune us in on this day that we celebrate all fathers. It is grateful that so many fathers could be with their families this day. We begin our summer program this year, so not too many things are going on, but our Sunday morning Bible study, if you're in town, our Sunday morning Bible study is continuing on at 9.30. We're going through the book of, of Genesis. Uh, Leadership Council will meet in a couple of weeks on the 10th of July after, after uh, worship and lunch will be provided. Our first hymn this morning is honor of Father's Day is Faith of Our Fathers. The call to worship this morning comes from the 113th Psalm, as well as Paul's letter to the churches in the region of Galatia. I will read the light print. I'll ask you to respond in the bold. Praise God, all you God's servants. Blessed be the name of our sovereign. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let the name of God be praised. May God's life-giving power be known to all and God's compassion be told in every place. God is high above all nations. God's glory fills the whole universe. The gospel of Jesus Christ turns us around and we become disciples and apostles. Listen for the voice of God in Christ, for God's word comes when we least expect it. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Lift us up into your presence, comforting God, for we are weighed down by life's tragedies. So much that is wrong in the world seems to be, at least in part, our fault. We blame ourselves or other people or you for the calamities that shake our existence. Help us to express our angers and our fears so that we may be ready for the new life you offer. Amen. Our next hymn is As the Deer.
And on this Father's Day, let us pray especially for fathers as well as other issues that are on our hearts this day. Oh God, we come to you and we thank you for our fathers who have given us life and love that we may show them respect and love. We pray for fathers who have lost a child through death that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends will support and continue to console them. Lord, we pray for men, though without children of their own, who like fathers have nurtured and cared for us. And for fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families, we pray to the Lord for them. And God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. And grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. And, O oh Lord, our thoughts go to the people still in Uvalde, Texas. For our hearts are still broken with pain as we deal again with a broken community caused by violence. Families mourn, children live in fear, and our nation asks why. We ask, the Lord, that you continue to comfort those families wounded by this event. Care for the souls who grieve and help us to work for greater and lasting peace. Help us to transform our own hearts, to turn from violence and to seek peaceful ways of resolving differences. Let our hands connect with those who feel alone, who live in, lo who live in fear, and those suffering from mental illness. Let our voices be raised asking lawmakers to create the means to protect all in our society, especially those most vulnerable. And let our choices be those that make our nation a healthy and holy land. And loving God, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for all those suffering or afraid, that you will be close to them and protect them, we pray for world leaders, for compassion and strength and wisdom to guide their choices. We pray for the world that is in this moment of crisis. We may reach out in solidarity to our sisters and brothers in need. May we walk in your way so that peace and justice become a reality for the people of Ukraine and for all the world. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ who taught his disciples when they prayed to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I would like now to introduce my wife, Janice Hafterson, who will be giving us the message this day. The scripture reading for this morning comes to us from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 25, through chapter 6, verse 4. This is regarding the Christian household. Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her in order to make her holy by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word, so as to present the church to himself in splendor, without a spot or wrinkle or anything of the kind, so yes, that she may be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands, you should love your wives 
as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it, just as Christ does for the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a great mystery, and I am applying it to Christ and the church. Each of you, however, should love his wife as himself, and a wife should respect her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise so that it may be well with you and with you and, and you may live long on the earth. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. This ends the reading of God's holy word. When Ken and I were in seminary, we had to do year long internships at, in a church. I interviewed and was accepted at a church in Northern California. Ken interviewed and was accepted as an intern um, in a Southern California church at Lake Arrowhead. When I went down to see him, I stayed with a church member, Lulu Johnson. Lulu was as feisty and opinionated, a woman who spoke her mind, kind of like our United Methodist women. I'd been with her for a couple of days. When she confronted Ken and I when we came back from a date. Apparently she had found a pair of men's running shoes under my bed in her guest room. She knew Ken was a runner and she immediately assumed that we had been together in that bed in her house. We both denied any such sort of thing, but she was convinced. She led us back into the guest bedroom and pointed at the shoes she found under the bed. Both Ken and I knew immediately they were not his shoes. Ken has small feet for a man, and these running shoes were huge. Lulu, he said, those are not my shoes. She insisted that he try them on. Ken didn't even have to undo the laces. He just slid his foot right in with room to spare. Oh, she exclaimed, they must be my grandsons. I forgot that he left them here a couple of months ago. She apologized profusely and we laughed. Even though Ken and I were slightly insulted, we were more amused than anything else. I tell you the story because in that situation, Ken had some big shoes to fill, literally. And according to today's scripture, husbands and fathers also have some big shoes to fill. Now, even though most of you men, if you are fathers, are fathers of grown children, still Ephesians has something to teach us about our walk with God. In fact, my brother-in-law didn't come into a relationship with Jesus until he was in his late 60s. But the way he transformed his life, praise God, was remarkable. He is a more attentive husband, and a doting grandfather. His children have also seen his transformation and respect it. Ephesians 5.25 packs a lot of meaning into the first few words. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. I heard a long time ago that the best gift a father can give to his children is to love their mother. Even though our girls roll their eyes at Ken and I, they know without a doubt that we are crazy, crazy in love. The running joke that they heard as youngsters was that I would never divorce their father. 
However, shooting was not out of the question. Thankfully, neither he or I own a gun. A child has a secure and steady foundation when he or she knows that his or her father and mother love each other. So the first part of filling big shoes as a father is to be a loving husband and partner. So let us first focus on the relationship between a husband and wife. Husband, love your wives just as Christ loves the church. How much did Jesus love us, the church? Enough to die for us? Husbands, do you love your spouse so, that, so much that you are willing to sacrifice yourself for them? Do you love your spouse enough to lift her up as more important than yourself? I'm not suggesting that you appear weak or have to put yourself down. Instead, do you have the strength to lift her up and honor her as worthy of the love of God? Verse 26 says, are you willing to give yourself up for her in order to make her holy by cleansing her to present both of you and her before God without spot or wrinkle so that may, she may appear without blemish? Paul, the writer of the letters to the churches in the New Testament, is often, has often been accused of misogyny, hating women, putting women in their place and telling them to be quiet. And in this passage, you might hear Paul suggesting that a husband is responsible for his wife's virtue, which could be interpreted as chauvinistic. But remember the context in which Ephesians was written. The husband is the head of the household, but not in a dictatorial, overbearing way. His wife was to be cherished, loved, and respected, just as Jesus cherished, loved, and respected those who followed him. <sighs> Women were still considered property, even though Jesus has taught that women had rights in a marriage. But you and I both know that traditional mindsets die hard. Paul was pretty darn radical in saying that men should love their wives as they love themselves. Paul says, he who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it, just as Christ does for the church. Can you imagine if each of us nourishing and tenderly caring for one another, just as Jesus did? When we nourish each other in a marriage relationship or in the church, we are feeding our souls and becoming more Christ-like. Two, studying God's word to better ourselves and our neighbor. And three, building each other up as the body of Christ. And when we tenderly care for another, one another, we listen instead of talk, have compassion instead of judgment, and walk towards a person instead of running the other way. Of course, to be this is a call to all Christians, but at the moment, Paul is holding husbands accountable. He concludes this paragraph of repeating, each of you, however, should love his wife as himself. And a wife should respect her husband. Now, before you elbow your wife, remember that respect must be earned. It is not an entitlement. If you are a boss or a leader in your job, respect doesn't always come automatically. And certainly in our annual conference, it is clear that we as the church have little respect for our governing authorities. What is really sad about the leadership of our annual conference is that they don't think that we need to earn their respect. So men, husbands, just because you are a man and Paul says that you are the head of the household doesn't mean that you are respected. Respected must be earned by seeing and respecting the people under your authority. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect. God knows that both Ken and I have habits that drive each other crazy. But overall, 
I am secure in the knowledge that he loves me and respects the person and pastor that I have become. Paul writes that both are members of the body of Christ. And when a husband and wife respect each other, then the children learn to respect them and themselves. Men, husbands, do you love your wife as much as you love yourself? Do you love your wife as Jesus loves you? Would you die for her? Would you give yourself up for her as Christ gave himself up for the church? Maybe that's why the hymn, The Church is One Foundation, refers to the God, refers to the church as she. That husbands may remember to love their wives as sacrificially as Jesus loved the church. In today's society, there seems to be no place for sacrificial love. Instead, fear, selfishness, the it's all about me attitude, and a demand that we choose sides for or against me. There is no room to regard each other as human beings and there is certainly no place for dialogue and getting to know each other or exchanging ideas. The ideal of sacrificial love also includes our children. Sacrificial love doesn't mean to put our children first and give them everything they want. Sacrificial loves that we regard our children as tiny human beings that deserve to be listened to and heard. It means remembering that they certainly haven't lived as long as we have, but that doesn't mean that their ideas, viewpoints, and perspectives don't have merit. And to your children, Paul writes in his last lines to families, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. This is such a packed sentence that I don't think I have time to fully analyze Paul's admonition. But there are a few key points I'd like to make. One, Paul doesn't say that your children won't get mad at you, but don't provoke them to anger. When our girls were young and we would tickle them or tease, when they'd had enough, they would say, stop, and we would stop. Sometimes Ken and I have to apologize if we took teasing too far, but we try very hard to respect their boundaries. Two, talk less, listen more. That's a lesson some of us are learning in today's societal unrest. But then in the context of parenting, listen to your children through their ears. Each child copes in different ways. My oldest would ignore racist comments in middle school, and when I asked her about a friend who was being harassed, she said, I ignore them because they're stupid. My youngest would turn around and confront them with their ignorance point blank. Because they each just deal differently with conflict, I really had to listen to and figure out what was the best way to empower them. Laugh with them. Paul says, bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Don't forget a sense of humor as well. Children misbehave because they are children and human. When Sarah lost her temper in pre-kindergarten, she learned that there are consequences. She learned to control her temper after that, but we still laugh about how we dealt with the incidents when she was three, and it's had a lifelong impact. Finally, pray with them. Let them pray what they've learned and to thank God for giving them ears to hear. Prayers can be expressed in words, yes, but also through writing, drawing, art, sportsmanship, and a variety of other ways. Showing a happy heart, showing a thankful heart, is a happy heart. So husbands and dads, what do you think? God through Paul gives you big shoes to fill. 
bigger than Ken's foot in the grandson's running shoe, bigger than the world's definition of manhood and fatherhood, and bigger than you might think you will ever be able to accomplish. But there is good news. The good news is that you are not alone. Love yourselves, men, as Jesus loves you. That's a whole bunch as big as the shoes you're called to fill. Happy Father's Day. And our last hymn this morning is Abide With Me.
And as we leave, let us always remember that the miracles of God continue. And some of those miracles will take place in you. And may the Holy Spirit grant us new life and the opportunities for greater faithfulness and may the glory of God be shown through you and seen by others. And may tears be dried up because of your carrying touch. Go in peace this day. And all of God's people said, Amen.